Sean Justice is an instructor of art and technology and a doctoral candidate here at TC. His teaching, advising, and research focus on the use of digital technologies in art and education, including digital fabrication, creative coding, web design, digital montage, photography, and digital fine art printing. And now, without further ado, I'll turn it over to our speakers. Thank you, Thank you very much. Let me give you a short overview of what we prepared for you. Uh, we set up the space here uh, in order, it's a space in, in progress. We, uh, the space just got renovated. Uh, it was our old sculpture studio and it's now, uh, we are reconstituting uh, it as a, uh, as a maker space, as a fabrication lab. And uh, so we set up some stuff. Uh, you see printer in the background, etc. Uh, that does a little bit of a job uh, that should be finished uh, by the time we are finished here. And uh, we prepared some slides to give you a bit of an overview about uh, not only what we do in our program, but also about uh, the, the, the theme of art being faced with technology and how uh, can we, in, as art educators and artists, take this on and, uh, and develop a curriculum around it. So we're going to talk about that. Um, and um, let me start. And we hope that we also have a, not only a, a little bit of uh, time for discussion, but also to, uh, for you to explore some of the materials that we brought and the equipment. Um, technology, when we, when we talk about technology, it's always emotional. People have very emotional uh, viewpoints about technology. It doesn't just, oh, uh, it's, it's not, nothing neutral. And uh, that goes from, through the entire spectrum, from people who say, ah, it's enough, uh, no more screens, to uh, gadget, uh, gadgetry and uh, always the newest, etc. And uh, that's, so people have feelings about that. Technologies can be disruptive, right? They can disrupt us in, our, uh, in, 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 in the way how we have been doing stuff and now we do it differently. But altogether, they are immersive. That means they are there and they are extension of, have become extensions of ourselves. So the question is, how do we deal with it? And um, we in the art and art education program, uh, we, we kind of approach techno te uh, technology in the sense that, like anything else, as a material. And that means a material we are working with. As, and uh, now, uh, since the materials have become digital, so we take that on and uh, um, explore them. And what that does is, we see today a, a growing together, uh, uh, the growing together of uh, art and design. Um, more than, uh, really in a, in, in a significant way, art and design, they are a little bit different, right? Art, you would think, is a little less uh, uh, purposeful. Design is a little more, uh, you have a certain problem, you want to solve it. Both come somewhat together. And um, that's actually an interesting uh, thing that, that happens, a development for us here at Teachers College because Teachers College, at its roots, was actually a school uh, that dealt with a manual, um, with, a, with a, um, helping people to get uh, into, the, in, into the workforce and uh, manual education. And that's actually where art uh, has been here at Teachers College very early on, 125 years ago. And uh, so it kind of, we, we come back to the roots in some way. So how does this come together? art and design. They come together through technology. Technology has been a driver that is changing the entire field. Uh, they come together through collaboration. I think today we work more collaboratively than we had 
And I think uh, learning in the 21st century is very much about collaboration, teamwork. And they come together in the making. Making brings them together. It's not so, uh, it, it may not matter so much what's the end product, but uh, whether it's a design product or an artistic exploration. Uh, processes are similar. They have some uh, differences as well, but they are also similar. Uh, often our students come in with a background in technology or design. Uh, we see the larger uh, system of, a, of, a, of the learning landscape change. That means uh, we see student-centered classrooms. That also actually makes uh, uh, makes for 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 the yeah makes the back gives a background for our change in terms of um, or the coming together of art and design. Um, then the focus, you, I'm sure you all have heard about STEM and uh, we in art, and, uh, art education we talk about STEAM, so the A bringing to the STEM uh, and in that sense uh, adding something that is really missing uh, in it. Then we see that uh, as, as artists we see how uh, art isn't just about uh, creating painting or sculptures. The, the, the output of artists has merged often about hybrid practices and um, when I talk about so t today when you meet an artist often you uh, artists would say oh they are doing uh, something in the field of social practice that is indicative for the world we live in which has become so to speak a problem uh, that people take on and try to find a response artists do too and uh, educators do too and schools do too so um, that's a little bit of background for why do these fields grow together. This is a, a, an interesting book uh, that kind of writes beautifully about this uh, n new learning landscape. Thomas, uh, uh, Douglas Thomas and, uh, and, and John Brown. Um, if you want to uh, read further on that. So new media um, in our, in our um, from our perspective are uh, they add something to the field of art education in ways where you could say well the old media had also was also playful right but new media is also playful so it's kind of a w there are possibilities that uh, that that can expand the field new media is playful it's transformative it's collaborative it's integrative, that means we work across the curriculum and across different programs and it's interdisciplinary. Uh, creative Technologies for us is um, a new curriculum expansion that we uh, have started uh, to, um, to set up and uh, it's going through uh, still uh, through state approval processes. And uh, it's a 15 credit point uh, concentration that we offer in art and art education. And um, part of it has to do, we already made, we, uh, we have uh, made expansions I in terms of space. We have created the Myers Media Art Studio that uh, Sean Justice has been uh, uh, coordinating now for a number of years. Uh, now this space is a new space, it's an expansion, it's uh, uh, now becoming a maker space with uh, different equipments that we are uh, planning to get. Uh, and laser cutters for example, and then uh, more along the way, and digital embroidery machines, etc. We see the student body change, uh, we see, uh, yeah, so it also, and it, so the interest of the students, that's actually what helps us to build a new curriculum and their interest in, 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 a, in the curriculum. So the CTC is a uh, curriculum, uh, C as in uh, creative, T as in technologies, and uh, C, the last C stands for all sorts of things, conversation, curriculum, conference, etc. Um, and then later on a certificate that we plan. The curriculum is built on, uh, on these six gold strands, Students, we want students to learn to, to become fluent or to, to gain fluency, I should say. That means that students lower or lose their anxiety about using materials in art classrooms and educational settings. Then that they gain uh, uh, skills in making and, and building and then that they are able to integrate 
technologies, creative technologies, or work with technologies creatively across the curriculum. This is all isn't just to, uh, to build skills, but also to um, help them to, to do something meaningful, right? To make meaning, to collaborate with each other and across the materials and the curriculum, and then to become stewards of, the, of these pr processes and, and being able to implement this in various educational settings. Uh, we have uh, we have actually we created a, a handout that you find a little bit of an FAQ about this new uh, creative technologies uh, curriculum um, idea that we are uh, developing still in process. Here you see the the six uh, gold strands, and that's uh, that's an example of the of the curriculum that we have developed. Starts with uh, with a. a, a a course that's already on the books and then uh, it, it goes further. We created some new courses, uh, creative technology studio courses um, and a research seminar around that, a colloquium series. So that's something we are developing. Art and technology is much about to ignite, to inspire and to innovate. Now that's the theme of the academic festival um, in order to, to, to uh, I mean, our approach to technology is because it's, uh, I, I mentioned at the beginning, it's very emotional, right? We have, uh, we have feelings ab about it. It's immersive. In order for students to, to, to or for all of us, to have a, to gain an, a creative uh, take on technology, it may be important to step back a little bit. And uh, that's... Uh, uh, we all know uh, we sleep less and technology keeps us awake late into the night um, and uh, we are a lot, I think here you see uh, the, the perennial uh, kind of uh, scrolling, right? Um, and so one of the, one of the things we do in, in, in already in our program, which we, as I said, uh, are trying to expand, is to, um, to have a uh, to have students uh, do an assignment, I call it on-off, so they have to turn off their machines, they have to think a little bit and go back and then do a visual uh, or artistic response to it. And I'll show you uh, there's a reason, I mean that's, that would be a good example, right? You, you, may know that, you may know that page, right? So this is the last page on the internet so, or on the web, so you can turn off. This, this has been around for 20 years. Um, and uh, so some of my students uh, came up with, uh, uh, speaking of Ignite, right, um, came up with this uh, as a response. <laughs> One of the students, he said, okay, let's uh, go back <laughs> without technology. How would I do create a fire? So he's trying to ignite a fire <laughs> in, our, in our media studio. And uh, there was a little bit of uh, smoke coming out <laughs> in his little demonstration. So, um, yeah, that's an example of uh, how literal we can take Ignite, right? Um, yeah, when I, when I say all materials, that means, and I think that's our approach in art and art education, to not go just with technology, but bringing them together. That's, I think, the, the, the answer about how can we meaningfully integrate technology in the art uh, curriculum by bringing them together and work with all of them uh, and have them allow to create or inspire us to create new forms, right? And um, here when, when I uh, talk about uh, uh, new, new forms, these are a few examples of what we have been doing with it. And uh, I, uh, maybe we just go back and forth, so Sean, maybe you can say, uh, comment on, a, a few, on, on, the, on the slides as they come. We have been working with scanography, um, and uh, that means using any of these materials and then do something, exploring it creatively. Do you want to... Um well, the, uh, I think the underlying question that comes up again and again is what is the purpose of expanding our repertoire of materials? And in order to begin to even ask that question, we have to have a take on the purpose of materials in the first place. 
And so this often gets, there's often a lot of confusion about this. So when we ask our students to play with a 3D printer, for example, or to play with a scanner in a way that might not be the ordinary way, what we're trying to do is to get an overall consciousness raising about the purpose of materials, the way materials create moments for learning. So if we go back to the traditional art studio, say, and we're playing with cardboard or paper or paint or charcoal pencils, one of the questions we would ask is, in what way does making a drawing with a charcoal pencil change if we're making it with uh, pastels or with watercolors or with some other type of drawing materials. What are the possible affordances or different voices that those materials might bring to the practice of making a drawing or a painting? Or if we build a sculpture out of cardboard, what are the differences if we were to build it out of paper or out of marshmallows or out of uh, tin pie tins? What kinds of differences might we begin to see in the, in the resulting form? And those are the underlying structural questions that we bring to these materials. So for example, if we, if we create an a, object like this one here, but we're using a scanner, what are the possible new stories or new metaphors or new jokes or new, new, new poems that might come out of creating a, sto a, a picture with a scanner that might be a little different if we, had, we could create a picture like this with pastel crayons, of course, or watercolor or oils. We could create a picture like this out of cardboard. What are the different types of stories and metaphors that might come out of that? One of the answers to that that I'm very interested in in my research is that this picture, creating it on a computer, it's already shareable in a way, uh, so it can be networked in a way that a cardboard drawing would be very difficult. You'd have to go through several iterations of taking a cardboard drawing. You'd have to scan the cardboard drawing. You'd then have to manipulate the cardboard, the scan, in order to begin to um, think about it as a networked drawing. This, at the moment of its creation, is a network. It's part of a network. It's part of the digital internet. And one of the things that I'm trying to get my students to begin to ask is, how does the internet or how does teaching in a networked age, how does that change teaching? How does that change the practice of learning? How does that change the practice of storytelling? So there's many, many answers to this question. But we, what we try to do in our program is begin from the level of uh, how do stories or possible meanings change when materials change. And many of these explorations that students have been doing with these new materials were entirely uh, yeah, are new materials for them. They haven't worked with them and uh, came up with uh, some beautiful uh, yeah, responses. And when I, wh wh I I'm, uh, this is, uh, I'm talking about inspiring students with this type of uh, exploration. So it opens something up that then they make connections, that then they may bring us that into their artistic practice and into their classrooms. And sometimes you don't know what sticks with them, right? And sometimes it doesn't stick right away. And sometimes it takes a while that they then come back later and they say, oh, I really could use this so beautifully in a classroom. Art educators often have uh, some uh, little bit of a, of a and hesitancy to use uh, new materials and all of us have hesitancy about using technologies to a, to a degree. I sometimes uh, uh, start with that question, who is afraid of technology? And the answer is everybody is. It's intimidating. It takes a little bit, uh, at least patience to explore it. It takes an open mind and it takes, uh, it takes tolerance for the frustration we go through because technology will err and uh, often we doubt ourselves rather than uh, the device or so. So here, painting with tablets, some of the outcomes or some of the, what students uh, have been doing uh, in, in, in these classes, right? And um, basic circuits. Here, this is a wonderful little booklet uh, uh, that uh, is great to use in, in classes, uh, in art classes. Uh, circuit sticker sketchbook. It's very simple. It shows uh, how does a, cir a simple circuit function and then uh, what you will need uh, in order to work with it and then how you can employ it and uh, how a basic uh, circuit uh, uh, on a piece of paper could look like. Uh, and here you actually can, you see uh, somebody paint uh, a, with a conductive uh, paint, uh, a circuit or the part of it, right? And, um, or here with conductive uh, tape. 
and uh, that's a very basic type of uh, um, exercise and uh, and then when but when it works may, may I, I I just show you uh, what the outcomes here we asked students to produce uh, each of them after we explored this got a piece of paper and then they uh, they uh, as a homework they then created these uh, pro projects where they had to translate what they learned technically in a workshop then into a uh, homework assignment coming up with a with uh, with uh, some really interesting uh, works you see uh, in each of them something was lighting up here you saw you can see actually uh, somebody doing a pop-up book and that was the, 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 so that these are some possibilities right and it starts with a fairly simple assignment or exploration and then students understand where they can take it I think the battery oh, it's still it's still it still works uh, it comes yeah. with a little story and that's when it becomes as Sean said interesting when we can uh, when we are able to connect it to stories right and uh, um, yeah you can feel free to, to go through it this is actually also one of the outcomes one of the students uh, used the paper to create this uh, it moves <laughs> and uh, back and forth a uh, little uh, robot so to speak yeah uh, or then we ask them can you do a tutorial because it's one thing to explore but then how do you bring this into teaching and uh, a good way is can you do a tutorial and one of the students just a, a few days ago actually put it up on Instructables and then it becomes a resource for, for other people and uh, uh, shareable. Here you see um, an example actually, this, these, uh, what, what, what happened here is, uh, this is we have a vinyl cutter over there and that could be cut with a vinyl cutter. So the, the circuits, uh, so you have a conductive uh, uh, foil and you cut it out, out of it. Digital fabrication is a category that's vast. It uh, what what it often what often people connect to it is 3D printing, but it has other facets as well: uh, vinyl cutters, uh, digital embroider machines, uh, then uh, of course CNC milling, etc. So that means there are these industrial techniques, and 3D printing has been around for 30 years and uh, or more actually yeah since the, be the beginning of uh, the 80s it's called rapid prototyping this um, technology and uh, but that it became affordable that's only since uh, about 10 years or so and now it's in all the it, it's in the schools many schools have maker spaces or come up with it so that's uh, we in the in the field of education all across also in art education have to react to that and uh, uh, bring that into the curriculum so that our students are equipped to then work with their students in that way and in their studios of course as well so the affordability opens it for education vinyl cutter here's an example you see it in the back as I said right here that's what you can do you can cut out out of foil uh, often used to cut out letters but you can use it differently as well you can cut out uh, designs. Again, that's where design and art comes together, right? In these type of technologies. It's the same technology used in design as it is used now in art, or as you can use it in art. Uh, or, yeah, that's, uh, th that would be a typical vinyl color project. Of course, you can paint it as well, but, uh, but it has a bit of a different feel, and it's very empowering for students uh, when they can do something that looks kind of perfect, then they do a T-shirt print or so. So it's much about the uh, uh, much about this is uh, is about inspiring students and uh, inspiring their Im imagination. Here, that's a uh, vinyl cut it, or here this too, right? And that's actually when we take these things as simple as they are into the arts, then it can become very meaningful. This is the work of Jorge Pardo. Uh, George, you probably recognize it. Uh, it was l very long, t for a year, n no, for a few months, it was part of the Doing and Undergoing exhibition. Jorge Pardo is a very famous uh, internationally working artist from Cuba who uh, actually is at that intersection of art and design. 
these pro th that project is actually laser uh, vinyl cutted or a laser, but laser is actually the same technology. It just is able to uh, go through deeper materials because of the laser. The other one has a has a cutting head, a blade. That too, right? That's a uh, um, vinyl cutted. 3D printing here. I uh, so yeah, yeah. These uh, if those of you maybe came in after a few minutes, where I have two of our printers over here and just doing some demo projects. One of the things about 3D printing, which is in the news all the time, and if you Google it, if you haven't, you'll see everything amazing from printing prosthesis and new hands and heart valves and and icing on cakes. Uh, it goes across the entire range of human experience today. And one of the things that is important to us, I think, about how this begins to become useful in schools, not only, like Richard said, not only in art education, but across curricular ideas, all, across all domains, has a lot to do with the way that we see these things. And we're forever kind of pushing our vision to the side to not get so wrapped up in the machine. These machines are really sexy right now. Everybody wants to know how they work. And if you haven't seen one, you probably want to get your hands and figure it out. But that's not really the point. The point is to learn how to think in three dimensions in a way that's really new in human experience, again, on a network level. Uh, for me, in class and teaching about 3D design, the point is digital 3D design. This is just a toy to get us kind of carrying through. And in fact, a lot of teachers have a lot of trouble figuring out how to use these things in their rooms because of mechanical difficulties. These are a little bit like the very, very first microwave ovens, uh, you know, 40 years ago that hardly barely worked and today they're indispensable in any kitchen. So as we keep exploring these new tools and these new materials, we I think what's happening with our prop, with our program in this space right here, Richard alluded to a media art studio, which is down the hall a little ways. The thing that keeps coming up is, you know, these things are exciting and the news and everybody's talking about all of these tools, but we have to be a little bit above the fray a little bit. We have to be continually asking, how do we use these things to make anything meaningful? How do we use these things to you know, propose new ways of knowing or new ways of thinking? And for me, one of the most important things is how do, I, how do I work in teacher education? How do I convince teachers to not get swayed by the fear that Richard mentioned, by the, the aha sort of uh, googly eyes about the new technologies? How do we get people to kind of step aside from that and really look underneath and, and see, is this really the purpose or is there something more important going on? That's a really a incredible challenge, I think. Um, so there's lots of fab labs uh, all over the place. If you look across the educational landscape, Fab labs are happening everywhere. I think what Richard and I are thinking about is how do we actually begin to look beyond the fancy tools and think about teaching at, for the 21st century. So this is a this is an image here of a, of what became really hot about a, a from a Kickstarter campaign. Maybe some of you saw it. It's a it's a 3D pen they called it, and the plastic that you see. That's uh, the, the uh, blue threads that you see. Those are plastics, the same kind of plastic that's coming out of this machine over here. But instead of being controlled by these gears that you would see over here in these machines, it's being controlled by the hand. And it's kind of fun. We have one that w one of our other instructors was borrowing it, has been using it in her class, which we love. We love to see people borrowing our equipment and using it. But we forgot that she had it, so we don't have it. We w wanted to have it here to show you. but. Come back next time, we'll try to make sure we have it. And when we talk about uh, so 3D printing, it's much about first you need to model it, right? It's about 3D modeling. And the modeling is, a, uh, is about spatial thinking. And that's a process and uh, an intriguing one. And, uh, uh, yeah. Here and these are some of the the possibilities not that, 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 that are not in the future, they, they are already here, right? The photo booth that doesn't take a picture but uh, prints a little, uh, a little uh, actually, uh, yeah, sculpture of the person, um, a, yeah. Um, or the house, the neighborhood, or the prosthetic hand. That's often used now as an example because, <laughs> as Sean is saying, right, that there's this, there's a lot of excitement. You go to these maker fairs, a lot of excitement about these uh, tools, 
and then people are desperate to find meaningful stuff, right? And then the prosthetic hand or these kind of uh, really helpful uh, tools that, that help us on a very basic, essential level are often pointed out for that purpose. Laser and uh, CNC, again, Corte Pardo, the, that's uh, the practice of an artist, but when you look at it, I mean, the, that's, uh, that's, that's done with a laser cutter. Uh, or this, uh, another example, right, done with a laser cutter. And uh, when, we, when we think of 3D, ultimately 3D forms often consist of 2D, right? So you have a two-dimensional form that you can stack together that makes a three-dimensional one. So you don't necessarily need a, a CNC router that kind of uh, takes it out of the material. You can also, or a sculptor, of course, uh, you can also put it together, you can assemble it, right? And that's, in, again, inspiring for students to, to, uh, to know and to think through that. And we see actually when we go to, to art fairs nowadays, we see lots of these things. They have been used in architecture, right, to create models. Maya Lin uses it a lot in her work. And now we see it uh, in many exhibitions. And yeah, that's a uh, laser cut it. Here you see a router. Or physical computing, we do some of that. And it starts with very basic uh, sim uh, things. You saw the menu at the... At the um, at the uh, luncheon, the alumni luncheon, and uh, uh, the menu was uh, a, an or origami piece. And uh, here we did this in a workshop to activate or origami that it moves with a little ba page pager motor and and a battery. And oh, we worked with uh, smart materials. The makey makey. I'm showing you just a few things so you see what does that mean uh, you using new uh, materials or this one is a, is actually it's a, um, a, a, a dr it's called Drodio and it's a it's a pencil that uh, is attached to a battery and a little micro uh, a motherboard and a breadboard and uh, with a, a few uh, with transistors and and, and so forth and uh, resistors and it's all put together, students learn to solder, and then they can create sound by, because it's uh, graphite, it's conductive, and it's a beautiful exploration for them. It's a kit. Kit means it's a little thing. Actually, I have one over there, on the, or two, on the table. Um, and um, uh, it's, it's something that's pre-packaged, and it's, that's not the end goal of what we do or so in the art education program. But it's, it can be a good start for, for schools to work with something that you know it will work. And it has all the components. Here that's a, uh, it's a, a, a very, it's a, probably the most simple way of uh, doing a, 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 a robot, at the brush bot. We have another one over there, the draw bot. Uh, that, uh, that's this thing with a feather. Uh, it still works. So it's, uh, uh, it's built with a few pencils and, uh, uh, and it's attached to, again, with a, with a pager motor and it uh, can, uh, can draw. These are a few examples. Then I showed you this. That's the life in sight and the happiness when it works. Or variable design, we explore this too, uh, to then bring in uh, fabrics and conductive thread and little microprocessors. That's something we're gonna get. We don't have it yet. A digital embroidery machine. And there are many other tools that we that uh, yeah that we explore. Video mapping. Here what you see here is uh, actually the, the airplane would not move like this. Uh, it would actually uh, move up, but uh, you can actually make it, uh, you can build a template so that uh, you can project onto a form that's not, uh, not uh, linear, right, that is, uh, goes around the corner. That would be an example for video mapping. We often do these workshops, and out of these workshops, as we push this, it's an offer to students to come back, learn more, and uh, it's a, a way for us to, to connect to the community, and it's a way to develop a curriculum. Here, 
um, maybe Sean, uh, if you if you continue. Um, so this is a, the home page for Scratch, which is a computer programming language, and Scratch is a very powerful tool at, for because of the way it uh, gets students engaged. It's used in many different parts of the curriculum. It's unfortunately not used very much in the art curriculum is what my research is showing. And so when I introduce Scratch to students and I do workshops, I do professional development workshops in a lot of different environments where I show teachers who are, you know, regular in-service teachers, people who are in the middle of their careers to introduce them to Scratch and the, p the potential for Scratch being used across the curriculum. There's a number of things about it. It's a, it's and actually, in actual fact, what I usually say is that, in my experience, Scratch is one of the very few, very, very few things in our educational ecology, broadly, broadly speaking, that is pure good all the way down to the bottom. It's one of the most amazing tools and for coming from one of the most amazing groups of people who have the most, uh, and a lot of superlatives in this, a very generous spirit, a very expansive, open spirit around the idea that teaching children or Having children learn how to program a computer is immensely empowering and emancipating and that the more we can do this in a way that goes across domains, pro the hypothesis is the better it is for all of us in a democratic open society. So this is one way of starting and if you're not familiar with, with Scratch, uh, I strongly recommend that you look it up, Google it, uh, Scratch, just Scratch programming and you'll find it. Google will directly uh, will direct you to the MIT website where you can download it or you don't have to download it. It's free. That's the other thing. It's all free. It's completely free and any, anybody can use it whether they have an online connection or not. So we do a lot of programming. I, I teach a course creative programming and we uh, explore different programming environments and how those environments might be useful in, in teaching across different domains. This was a very simple uh, video game, very, very simple, and uh, a, an assignment for students uh, knowing the platform Scratch, which is about visual programming, uh, and it's very accessible, it's one of the most accessible ways of learning coding, is, uh, and then uh, they, they create a, a little video game, and how empowering is that, right, to, to see that uh, with, uh, with uh, the, the, the right approach and a uh, little bit of instruction how, where they can push it. And, or here with, the, with the, uh, the, that's the connection between the computer and, the, and uh, actually also Scratch, uh, but uh, w with, uh, with sensors that allow uh, additional input. So it becomes then interactive. Uh, this is a great, this is a, these pictures that Richard is showing right now came from an event that we hosted last December called Scratch Day. Scratch Day is uh, aimed at families and, mostly families, but families and teachers. And people come together once a year, twice a year in some communities to share Scratch projects, to teach each other, to explore learning. This was a project that was used, uh, Richard, on the screen a few minutes ago put up the word physical computing and if you're not familiar with what that might mean essentially it's a pretty simple concept actually taking what's happening inside the computer and putting it into the world of gesture and motion and the way our bodies work and there's many many ways of doing this this is a this is an example using a chip you see all those uh, the red blue green black wires connecting to that little piece of white board there that's called a makey makey it's a plug and play device that brings the what's happening inside the computer outside of the computer and this girl had made this doll this figure with um, conductive hair out of a uh, Brillo pad or a, a steel wool pad and every time she touched it she had programmed in the computer to have a yell, to have a little girl yelling, yeah! And she said in front of 300 people at the end of the day she demonstrated it for us with all confidence and poise and she said this is what it feels like when mommy combs my hair and she touched it and so what we see happening is this sense of empowerment and uh, there are skills involved, and so we don't want to totally forget that there are skills involved. How did she learn how to do this? She had adults help, but she also was using a particular set of tools that are, have been designed with different developmental capabilities uh, really up front. But she was able to tell a story about something that was really rooted to her life and so confident about it, she had no problem at all 
displaying it for uh, 200 people in front of in front of her in the auditorium over here, which was pretty empowering for me to see as a as a teacher actually. So. As I said, right, losing the fear, it's about fluency. And that's often the outcome of uh, the students, uh, in, in really in their feedback to us, what they learn in these courses, that they, it, they, do, they don't become experts. Of course not. You cannot ex uh, ex uh, expect that in, uh, in the limited uh, um, amount of time that we have to uh, go into new uh, technologies. That's why we are actually also expanding it. But the most important thing is to uh, help them to lower the barrier. That was a project uh, showing uh, how collaborative it is uh, to work with, uh, with new materials. People don't know everything, right? And uh, maybe they have never done a video uh, edited. And, uh, so what, but um, then you can divide the class into groups and one of them has an expertise in that and then they can share it and then it becomes collaborative and that is very empowering for them to to see and actually for uh, for us as uh, as educators uh, something that uh, is very very interesting particularly through the technology teaching or working with technology to explore that to to think through these projects and come up with ideas that allow to for, for them to work in groups and uh, that's what we uh, what we are doing more and more actually so it, with technology. Uh, here, this was a, an example how to dance properly. Uh, that's a website's been around ten years. Was very success, uh, success. It's one of the first early viral videos that uh, this very um, very talented entertainer put up uh, on his website, and uh, he does little moves. So students were <laughs> were uh, d yeah did uh, little miniature. Uh, one-minute videos uh, on on with those templates, and in a collaborative fashion, so that uh, establishes a community of learner, team learning, team building, team solving, teamwork. Uh, when we say it, uh, new media is uh, transformative, right? Creative technologies is transformative. That means it's often not about uh, them doing too much with it. Sometimes it's it can be enough to kind of go a little bit to the threshold and to look into that space. And then uh, they may pick it up later on. Uh, here that's the Oculus Rift. And once you kind of uh, understand the concept, then you can start uh, incorporating this and build around. Or, you know, technology is not always about uh, doing something that's successful uh, or just a, a feasible outcome. For us in, in the arts, it's sometimes just to to uh, to come up with something that uh, that may exactly not work or be disruptive. Here, this is a, a good e example for a, for as it is called uh, uh, a useless machine. Uh, that's what it does. <laughs> and that's that's what what it means to think about technology creatively, right? In a sense, it's not the it's not the end goal. It's not about the device. It's not about the tool. It's about what we do with it. And uh, transformative, that means we build our future. That means uh, in education we constantly think about, so what, what, is, what is it that, uh, that we prepare students for or educate them? And uh, um, yeah, it places us, new media places us in, in the world we live in. Here, that's what that means, and you actually see those uh, uh, dice. Uh, in one of our classes, we have these, uh, the one of the final projects is uh, that students have to uh, toss the dice, and then uh, there is a new media dice, there is a, a traditional media dice, and then there is a theme dice, and then they, they, they have three uh, outcomes, and that together they have to uh, actually come up with an idea and then a, uh, a piece that reacts to that and, and brings them together. It's about bringing all of this together. Old medium, old media, new media, and, um, and, uh, and but then also meaning, right? Uh, a theme, so to speak. Learning works best. Sorry, you have 15 minutes. Okay. Learning works best when, when, it, uh, when we combine it all. talked about that interdisciplinary, right? The, circ the, the circuits. 
about working across the aisles, connecting classrooms, going beyond schools, connecting art and design, and then to think about curriculum and how we can revise it. Here you see the, 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 the um, yeah, let me, let me wrap up so we have a little bit of time to, to discuss. Um, and for your questions, innovate. Innovate, what does that mean? Art is a really, I think, a great way to think about technology. And why is that? Because it allows us to approach it creatively. And by doing so, we can incorporate it where it is uh, there to create stories, metaphors, meaning, and not a purpose for just uh, for, for by its own for its own. And uh, that's uh, the coming together of art and design. You know, uh, Skiller, uh, Scofie, uh, Diller, Scofie, and uh, Renfro. Uh, it's an architectural firm, but they started actually out as sculptors and uh, media artists. And uh, here you see uh, that uh, the elements uh, where that kind of thinking comes. Then they became these uh, architects. They re they redid uh, Lincoln Center, uh, opened it up. That kind of platform that was uh, high up there, and they brought it back into the city. And uh, here, that's a piece where they uh, have people um, actually experience uh, the, the technology, uh, not the te the experience an image as an, a piece of architecture. So that's interesting when artists can, uh, where artists can then also push it. And that's the beautiful journey that we uh, are excited about uh, every day. Uh, here, an artist who uh, not only does these sculptures, but also creates uh, furniture. That's again bringing together the two fields. Or here, this is a beautiful project by uh, collaboration by two uh, female artists who do these sweaters. And, uh, and it's called Knitted Radio. Uh, they actually create with conductive wire and patterns. They, cr they knit uh, a radio, a, a, a transmitter, and it actually works. And it comes from, from, a, from, a, from, a, um, from different ideas about social space, thinking about, the, thinking about technology with regards to the space that we live in it, right? And uh, that uh, technology is sensor-based often, and, uh, and we can expand ourselves through it. It's a beautiful project that I often talk about because it's about creating something that is meaningful. Um, and it can be very simple with, uh, with, um, uh, with, the, with um, we don't need to be complex for, uh, to start something that can complexify, so to speak. We can start with a very simple kind of uh, assignment or exploration that then becomes, goes further. Uh, CTC, Creative Technologies Curriculum, uh, we actually have an exhibition come up with artists, uh, wh where have artists taken it? It starts uh, beginning of June, June 1st, we have a reception on the 19th, and a symposium, a second symposium, we had one in last fall, the uh, second symposium is coming up uh, on uh, June 19th, and then the curriculum that we expand. That's. Um, uh, that's, um, that's now, uh, we would love to hear your questions or your comments or your concerns or, uh, so that we can address some of that. Please. Um, so our staff at TCM Relatively New, this is fascinating, thinking differently. Um, you know, is, is their job to incorporate technology at this point? Should they be doing basic traditional arts, you know, I mean, there are a million questions there, but I think you know where I'm going. Yeah, thank you for the sure. question. I think it's a great question. Uh, has it, one could probably really, uh, yeah, one could have exactly a symposium just about, right. about right. that, right? And uh, matter of fact, we, the first symposium was about that. Uh, and uh, uh, so the, 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 the answer, number one, uh, is I think it's, it's important not to to single out uh, technologies and not to have our uh, students who become art teachers, and a lot of them do become art teachers, just uh, focus on traditional materials. We want to actually allow for them to know how to work with new materials as well, to expand their knowledge and, and their uh, fluidity and their abilities to bring, to work uh, across the curriculum and across materials. So I think it's empowering for them to know uh, more. Do they have to take it on? It's up to them. 
it's up to the school environment. And, uh, and, and sometimes that takes time to bring in, right? And uh, then to, to bring it across the curriculum. But it is a really great uh, opportunity for them and I think uh, one of the outcomes actually of a, an alumni survey that we uh, had uh, was exactly about that, that students felt we wished, and that was from 2010 through 2013, we wished uh, we could have done more with technology. They felt they needed more. That is why we feel we need to adapt our curriculum. So because they felt uh, in their classes, uh, in their schools later on, they need more. Do they have to do it? No. It may be, uh, there may be many reasons to, to, to do what you want to do with the materials that are there, number one, for affordability purpose, right? But uh, then, um, then there may be reasons to, to expand uh, in order to, 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 to bring something in that students already have, right? As a, I mean, a friend of mine has this, uh, uh, has a, her little one uh, was, um, very comfortable with the, with her little uh, t uh, smartphone, and to the degree that uh, when uh, when she uh, was then looking at the, at the book, <laughs> she did the same. She tried to scroll the book, <laughs> right, the pages, <laughs> instead of uh, turning the page, and that means the students uh, change too. And then for art educators to be able to uh, to bring to react to that, that is just expanding their versatility. Do they have to do it? No, they don't. And actually, there's also a point, and uh, I think uh, Sean spoke uh, quite a bit exactly about that. There is no necessity to work with new materials if we can do it with old or traditional materials. It is interesting to think about what can they do, though, what the traditional materials cannot do. And that's interesting for them also to explore in our program, through, through the courses, through the classes. Could you talk Two. a little bit more about the curriculum that you envision for this program? Um, it's it's a it's a curriculum that that uh, is um, it, right now we set it up for two years, mm -hmm. and uh, so that it's really sequenced, and uh, it starts with uh, courses uh, such as new media, new forms. We already have that. Right. That's a survey class. And then it goes into a class called Digital Foundations, where they go a little deeper in, in various concepts. Because when you do a survey, and what we did here was also a little bit of survey, right? That means touching on various things. Um, then you can't uh, really explore it deep, more deeply. So that's uh, in, the, in the second semester. Then we have one uh, elective where we want actually students to bring in a class or a course that particularly is interesting for them to integrate across the curriculum. And that doesn't have to be in our program. That can be in, in the math, math, uh, math uh, science uh, technology program. Uh, they also deal a lot with particular technology, right, in education, or any other program that fits to that kind of curriculum. Then in the, in the second year, we have studio uh, courses. And the studios are, we envision a little bit like practice camp. Where's, and, and the focus is on collaboration, where we, where we ask them, you are, not, uh, you are not doing here weekly assignments, as in some other courses, but you are actually working on, on a project together with some of your colleagues in groups over the course of a semester, maybe even of, of over the course of a year. That gives them a very different uh, type of, uh, um, of uh, immersion. Im immersi immersion. Are and you adding coding to yeah. programming into yeah. the program? Yeah. And then that I envision as something, uh, so these studio courses, they come with workshops. They have to take um, a minimum of uh, three workshops per semester. Mm -hmm. uh, and those workshops will help them to get those skills that they need to do these projects and there's flexibility. And I want uh, the workshop uh, uh, instructors, who some of them we will bring from outside, uh, I want them to also be available as facilitators, so, or as consultants, as they develop and further develop their, their projects. And when I say outside, that can be within our program, or uh, it can be um, within, I mean, within our school, or outside also, uh, yeah 
there are many I mean it's a flourishing um, um, field in, in New York. It's, New York becomes actually a total technology hub. Mm -hmm. So is it a curriculum for novices or people who already have some grounded experience in technologies or some design or what? I think it, it leads uh, students into it. So it, they don't have to bring uh, anything uh, to it, uh, but uh, it will actually um, equip them with, with everything they need. Mm. Yeah. Thank you so much for you know programming this curriculum as a student. It reminds me, and to all the educators and teachers here as well, uh, it reminds me a lot of my um, bachelor, I mean undergrad uh, experience. I, as a student, really enjoy it. I'm, I'm pretty sure that my fellow students, as my friend here as well, <laughs> really enjoyed it as well. Uh, we had printing classes, uh, 3D printing, um, and also laser cutting. Uh, sculpture, workshop, just like what you guys are doing here. And also, it combines with a lot of technology that we use today. I am actually working now as an interior designer and uh, I actually take on those um, programs that I learned in school um, to my career right now. And it really helps. And to me, it's more of a, um, you know, just like you go into a museum that you broaden your horizons to you know, evaluate um, to to um, escalate your taste in art, your appreciations of art, rather than really you know learning a hardcore skills that you might or might not use in later of your life. But I mean, as where I am right now and where I was as a student, I really appreciate this kind of career. career so. Yeah, like yep. as an incoming student to the arts administration program here, I just didn't imagine I could like know there was a program like yeah. this. Because that's what I did for my undergrad study and I was shocked because we did all the like iPad drawing thing. Yeah. We were our special it. topics yeah. classes. I did an independent study with the professor too, so we did much of the similar work. So I think it's, yeah. we it's even, a pretty important. We even part. went to yeah. our botanian garden to do the oil, you know, the butterflies join on iPads, and we go out to fields uh, to draw people, and we did a little bit combination of you know fine arts figure drawings with the new technology, and we really, not, we really, really enjoy it, and we are really excited to see you know it's actually written on the curriculum that we're going to use iPads to draw. <laughs> so yeah, we got really excited about that. <laughs> we were offered iPads. Yeah, we were offered so. iPads, <laughs> and yeah. That was awesome. I yeah. think it's. It's very good, yeah. It's very encouraging for us yeah. as we further develop this work. There was a, an, another question somewhere? Yeah. Is this, are you aiming to really broaden their thinking? Is it, is it a cognitive thing about um, broadening what they're going to do with technology and art using, with art as the vehicle, but using technology? and putting the two together to broaden their whole idea of how they're thinking, to think outside the box so they can bring that to any area that they endeavor to work in? The answer would be absolutely yes, uh, there's no doubt. And why? Because art is, a, isn't, art is a way of thinking, right? So it, is, it, is, it, is, it challenges you to bring it further, right? To develop it, to, to, to not just uh, say, print plastic, right? It's not about printing plastic. By the way, the print is, uh, is, is done, but uh, it's not about that. It's, it's creating something that is meaningful, yeah, that, is, that, yeah, that inspires us, that, that uh, pushes our reflective thinking and our imagination. That is what art making is about, and that's, that's why uh, bringing in more technology is really also a form of uh, media education then, but from a point of uh, that uh, is rich, right, from, from the points of the arts, uh, that, that is a really, I think, uh, great spot to think about technology. And uh, yeah, the print is ready. Here you see the, no, 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 the, 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 the actually the, uh, 
the dice of which I, I, I talked about then. Uh, here is one and uh, came out of a class actually uh, that uh, we have been teaching and uh, it's a great <laughs> it's a great tool for 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 classrooms uh, students get very excited about these uh, about these dice they they always know from previous classes oh <laughs> when it comes to that they're very excited about uh, their final assignment uh, because it's the toss of the dice and or the cast of the you don't know what comes out right <laughs> Yeah. Hi. Um, so you're talking about the new curriculum and how you're going to develop these studio practice classes with this technology. Are you going to be um, having courses for the teachers to learn how to implement this in the classroom when they leave here as well? I, uh, m m man many of our classes are particularly about that. Or, I mean, the, 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 the elective, for example, integra integrating is exactly about uh, bringing it into the curriculum, but also the, the new media, new forms is, uh, is, is built on not only exploring new medium, but new media, but actually bring, uh, making those connections to the classroom mm -hmm. all the time throughout, yeah, throughout. And that's actually the, the, the beauty of it. So this isn't about just the art and technology, it's about art, technology and education. Mm -hmm. And with that trifecta, we think uh, we, we are uh, developing uh, a curriculum that is distinct and, uh, and, 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 and novel. Uh, we have something to offer that a lot of schools, art schools or so, can't. And uh, because we bring in the uh, educational perspective as well. Yeah? This is like a little epiphany for me. I never really thought about this, but there's a huge connection between art and science. And when I think about my own background in biomedical engineering, the reason I got into it was because I was so fascinated looking at the, the vortex trails coming out of smoke, or if you look in a stream, you see these, again, going around a rock. And you can put your hands in and actually you know, change the flow and the patterns. And again, I've had colleagues working in, with electron mic microscopy, looking at blood cells and LVI. They're very aesthetic, and they've actually done books of, you know, artistic photography. So this is actually doing the tinkering with different materials. I don't know if you thought about doing fluids or in, in biomedical engineering. We had all kinds of oddball fluids to do in materials. They're really weird things. And they're fun to develop, like Play-Doh or Silly Putty, to yeah. play with and develop from. Yeah. But when you do that, the curiosity can lead you in asking the questions that, that bridge right into, into your scientific study. I wonder if you have you thought, are you collaborating with any colleagues in the science that you had, or, you know? Uh, the, see, the, the, it's part of the expanding the curriculum, yep. but, uh, but it is on our, not only on our radar, it's, uh, we are actually talking uh, with uh, other people here, uh, and, uh, our, um, for example, with, uh, with Ellen Meyer, yep. right, and who is, very, who is very thrilled about our work. Uh, and, uh, and the possibilities uh, that come out of it uh, for collaboration. And then we do, with some of these workshops, we have uh, explored, I mean, you know, you can do this on a very simple uh, thing. Again, squishy circuits, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's where, it, I mean, it's one way to start it, yeah? I'm just wondering if you're doing any interdisciplinary or planning with MSTU um, to do any courses with the technology on physical computing or you know wearables digital fabrication there's so much mm -hmm. you know there's so many people in that program that play with makey making and Arduino and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. uh, we are very uh, we, uh, we are um, actually collaborating with them in the sense of uh, they were involved in us uh, developing the curriculum uh, and uh, very interested in in uh, in doing a joint uh, work there uh, that means the program, but also a really single faculty member, and uh, we are very open to that because I think that's one of the chances uh, to be in an education in the graduate school of education where you have so many different players. Huge advantage, and uh, to to collaborate, to synergize, and to develop things that that uh, that push everybody forward. And technology is a way too big a theme that anyone can take it on and say this is ours. It's all, we, we live in it every day, right? I think. You're out of time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much.